Hello and welcome to another demonstrational video here at MB Motons. This time it's the 2022 Auto Trail F62. So I'll run you around the outside and then we'll move on to the inside. So first things first, on the cab, the blinds, the blackout blinds are operated on the side here. Uh, like so. So what you do is you pinch together uh, this clip that's just here and then draw this across and there's a magnetic strip that joins it together there. Uh, so that's your blackout blinds. When you're drawing these back, just draw them back straight and then make sure that that's clipped in position uh, and it, it that, what that does then is it stops it from coming across if you're cornering while you're driving. This um, is pretty much the same for the windscreen you just pinch those two together draw this across and as you can see there's a section there that makes way for this bit here and that's exactly the same on the driver's uh, side you just draw that across and there's a magnetic strip that draws them together so that's how the blackening blinds are dealt with okay once again just make sure that that's pulled back fully uh, and won't then draw across uh, while you're driving to swivel the seats on this model and uh, there's a little bar at the front here so you pull that that allows the seat to swivel <clears throat> okay it locks in position when it's forward facing but it won't lock in when the um twisted round and showing the other way uh, there's a chassis plate here with your weights on your fuel is filled uh, via this here uh, and also you need to add, add blue add a tiff into this motorhome which is filled just here there's an in, there's an indication on the actual uh, dashboard to tell you when that needs filling so you've got your fuel into here add blue additive into there okay to get onto, under the bonnet on this model you do need the keys so you put the keys into here that way uh, so anti-clockwise and then as you're turning it clockwise you need to lift the bonnet simultaneously okay underneath the bonnet then we've got washer fluid brake fluid, oil fill, dipstick. Uh, to, uh, if you ever need to jump start this vehicle, then the positive or red cable goes onto this here, and then the black or earth cable goes onto that metal tab just there. So you attach the crocodile clips to that metal tab there. And here we have the uh, coolant reservoir. Okay, working on around the motor and then we've just got access to storage. Looks like the leisure battery is housed just here. So there's a leisure battery in there. It looks like there's another one in there as well. And the tool kit, uh, you've got access to this storage from uh, from the inside. Uh, and it looks like there's a, a, a tool kit for the Ford just there. Okay, so next thing along then we've got the um, barbecue external barbecue point so the way that this works is that this this section here so this bit here uh, you put a flexible hose onto the end of that and that pushes on uh, and goes off the, the flexible hose the uh, gas hose would go off to your appliance if that curls off and is, is uh, attached to a barbecue this end pushes into this section here so you can see it's like a bayonet fitting so it pushes into there and then to release it you push that collar back and that's how you uh, connect up to your gas supply. That, that tap then switches that gas supply on or off. Okay, so uh, again, we've just got storage here. There's a tow bar fitted to this model. The reversing camera is that little black lens just there. Uh, the vents on the back are for the fridge. What that does is it draws cool air in at the bottom and expels warm air at the top. If you're washing it with a uh, pressure washer just be careful not to squirt the water upwards into the vents because uh, that uh, it, it is actually an open vent uh, so these are designed for water to run off them like so and um, so that they're, they're the vents for the for the fridge okay then we've got the next lock al along that's the toilet um, cassette so when that's full and there's an indication inside to tell you when it's full you lift that up slide this out that in theory then would be full of toilet waste. So to slide it out and put it on the floor. Okay, so to empty this, you slide the nozzle forward like that, take the cap off the end, and then with the cap off the end, turn the whole cassette 
upside down so this is facing downwards and pour the uh, liquid away to uh, refill this once so once you've emptied it what i tend to do is fill it full of fresh water again swill it around and then empty it again it's then ready to take the chemical which is put into this section here so what you do is you slide that back open up the blade like so pour the chemical into here with a little bit of water in the bottom and then it's ready to use again when you're emptying this cassette press this button in here as the liquid is pouring out of that end what it does is it uh, it lets air in as the liquid is coming out of that end okay this has got wheels on it as you can see just there and the idea is it's got an extendable handle that pulls out of the top there and then it'll allow you to wheel it over to the disposal point next to that we've got the gas locker and um, so it'll it'll take two uh, bottles so one goes in here and those straps keep that in uh, position the other one goes in there and there's the strap here that keeps that in position so the bottles sit into there and you turn those on and off via the taps that are on top of the bottles this is a pressure regulator so what that does is it, it regulates the pressure that's coming out of the bottles this is flexible hose here just needs attaching to this regulator which i'll do for you and the other end this end here goes into your gas bottles underneath the motorhome on this side we've got a tap here with a blue head on it and um, that is to empty the fresh water tank um, there's another one just there with a grey head on it and that empties the wastewater so there's an indication inside to tell you um, when they're full or if you need to empty them that's where you do it it's deadly important that you drain these down in winter conditions if it's uh, if it's if water's allowed to freeze within those tanks uh, it'll expand and it'll crack the tank and all the pipe work so very important that you you drain those down just one point to note with that when you're draining these tanks down open up the taps inside the motorhome so open up the, the uh, sink taps in both the bathroom and the kitchen obviously with these taps here they need to be closed in order to retain the water uh, that you're going to fill up the motorhome with okay so to fill up the motorhome what you do is you just put a hose pipe into here and that's going to fill up the fresh water tank the fresh water tank um, is on this side here so that's that's where you're draining it down so that's how you fill it uh, and there is that's lockable to stop anybody tampering with your water uh, via this key that's just here uh, there's a full bunch of keys also with this so we've got we've got two sets of keys and they're all complete so i'll move on to the inside of the motor and that's the exterior stuff dealt with for now okay we're in the motor now and uh, this is the main control panel so this is on the uh, towards the back of the motor we've got the fridge underneath and then the control panels above okay so to switch your main control panel on it's this button here you can see you might be able to see the lights have come on at the same time so um your main lights will be operated via that button there this is your water pump so what that'll do is pump water from the tank which i've shown you how to um, um fill on the outside what you've got to do is basically pump switch this on when you first fill it with water switch your pump on come to your tap switch that on to hot and wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of your tap what you've then done is pump water through all the pipe works displacing all the air out of the out of the system so uh, i suppose it's a bit like if you had a caravan you've got to pump it for um a little bit to get the water through your pump but it's a, it's a it takes a bit longer on this because you're filling up the boiler so if you if you switch your tap onto hot water then it'll prime the boiler and then that's ready to use okay so on your control panel try and hold this still um it's telling you about your leisure battery here we're actually plugged in so um that's where the uh, voltage is coming from that's your external light if you press this here it tells you about your your levels so your vehicle battery full your water tank uh, so your fresh water has got 75% your waste is zero 
you can actually select your uh, battery if you wanted to use your um, vehicle battery then you could press this button here and it'd switch it over to vehicle i wouldn't recommend that because if you flatten your vehicle battery uh, as well as your leisure battery you're never going to be able to start your engine temperature um so you've got 73 percent humidity internal is 19 degrees uh, that allows you to adjust the time uh, via this here so it's you're back to the main menu so relatively straightforward control panel here um, you're just scrolling through your levels with this that takes you into the menu once you've selected it on and off internal lights water pump these are your heating controls okay so what you do with this is you just swipe your hand across the front of it and it wakes these control panels up this one here is for the heating of your um, the motorhome itself so the way that you operate this is you select your temperature by pressing up and down here that's uh, frost protection so it just stays above five degrees that's a night heater stays at about 16 degrees and then you can select the temperature that you um, desire by going up and down on these things here what you've then got is whether you want to heat it on electric or gas if you want to heat it on gas press that button there when it's ignited on gas, that will turn orange. Now, it won't do that now because we've not got any gas connected. So I'm gonna switch that off before it goes to fail. When you first put your gas on, it will take a while for the gas to come through the pipework, similar to your water system. So you might have to turn that on and off two or three times in order to get, uh, in order to get the gas boiler to ignite. Now, you've got electric here. Uh, you, what you're doing is you're just pressing that button there and that switches it on for electric okay so this is your electric operation you can probably see there's three lights there um, if you press this um, keep your finger on it it'll allow you to select uh, what power output you want the electric to operate at so uh, I think one's one kilowatt two kilowatt three kilowatt but if you refer to the manual which i've got here it explains about the kilowatts so the reason for that is if you're on a low ampage site then just leave it on the one kilowatt like that or the lowest setting and it um prevents you from blowing the fuse on the site okay and then the next one along is your water again wake it up by just swooshing your hand across the front exactly the same you've got your frost protection um, and then you, you're adjusting this via your up and down button here okay and then you select whether you want gas like so and um, again it'll turn orange once it's ignited and then you've got your electric uh, function here okay so exactly the same situation uh, on, bo on both sides so you've got electric uh, and gas and exactly the same for the heating but this is this is for your water this one and as you can see there you've got the three dots again exactly the same operation as I've just described underneath that we've got the fridge and um, so to operate this it's the on off button just here and then we've got the power options here so however you want to power the fridge uh, that's how you uh, select uh, the icon here okay so you can scroll through um, however you want to power the fridge so you've got gas there I don't know if you can see that little symbol 12 volt that will only work from the engine alternator and it will only get the fridge it, it doesn't get the fridge cold it just basically keeps the fridge cold as you're traveling so it's like transit cooling uh, next one along is uh, mains electric next one along is mains electric again uh, that will keep the fridge cold uh, and get it cold and then you can select A so automatic um, power selection so what that'll do it'll automatically select the most relevant power source 
here we've got the temperature control so you can adjust your temperature okay um, if it's really cold then you don't want the fridge working over time just have it on the lower setting okay um, and to jump from your power selection to the temperature it's this button here okay so you can see there we've got automatic power selection it's selected mains electric for us and, that, and that's your temperature that you've got it set at if you want to adjust anything just give a long press on here and when they start to flash you can then scroll through which power output you desire so you press it again and it takes you over to your temperature and then you can select which temperature you want to switch it off it's a long press on this button here um, with the fridge if you're going to leave the motor on for any length of time um, and you're going to lay it up and not use it for a few months maybe don't leave the fridge door shut um, just leave it slightly ajar so you need to pull this little blue tab out here and set the um, hook from this onto that little blue tab what it does is it keeps the door slightly ajar and it means that air can circulate around in the fridge when it's not in use okay and um, on to the washroom I mean it, there's I really only need to show you the toilet how that functions in here okay so what you do lift the lid slide this across and use the toilet press your flush button and then close the blade back up via this little slider here so that is attached to the cassette which I showed you outside make sure that's closed before you uh, use the toilet uh, because what that'll do um, is stop any toilet waste sloshing around while you're traveling I think there is actually an illumination behind this little panel here that tells you when your cassette needs emptying okay um, there's a the table storage is just in here so that's where the table is there is this vent here so to get this operational all you do is turn this dial here and that lifts the lid on the uh, sky vent what you do is you switch it on by pressing the middle button and then you can select which direction you want the air to flow in and repeated buttons on here increases the speed Okay, what you, need, what you need to do with that, if you're going to change the direction of the fan, don't have it going full blast one way and then suddenly change it the other way because you'll, you'll actually burn out the motor. Uh, just make sure this is closed before you set off and then you just wind this back down. Okay, with regard to the boiler, I've, I've removed this, the seating group from here because the, the boiler which I've shown you the controls on, which are just there, um, when it's heating the water, the boiler, it needs to be emptied down, okay? So, if you're not going to use the motor for any length of time, uh, as with all the water containers, you've got your fresh water, your waste water, all need to be emptied. Okay, so the boiler is probably the most important part of that. And to empty that down, it's this yellow uh, dial here. Okay, so that's actually now in the open position. That will not retain any water in in the boiler, so it won't. It's not usable in that position. It's going to drain all the water out of the boiler, which is the position you want it in in winter. Uh, for the usable position and for it to retain all the water, uh, then it needs to be pointing in that direction. Okay, so that's the usable position. I'm going to leave it there uh, in that position. But whenever you're not using it. And it's winter and you don't want water freezing in this boiler then you turn this yellow handle around like so very important that if water's left in that boiler and it freezes you could uh, crack the uh, crack the tank uh, when it expands okay so we've got this this seating group here i'm going to put that into the bed mode so that you can see how you do that okay so you can see here that i've got the table in the center of this dinette i've pulled this section forward the backrest that normally sits here and is retained into there, that goes into the uh, gap that this bit, when it goes forward, bridges. Uh, so that's, you can see, forms the base for the bed. Okay, I'm not sure if I've got that combination right, but you can see you're, you're using the cushions there to form the base for the bed. 
Uh, I'll just take those cushions off and I'll show you what forms the gap that bridges the uh, uh, bridges the gap between the um, cabinetry. Okay, like I say, I've got the table in there and that extends out like so. And then you've got these boards here which bridge the gap in between there. Okay, so that concludes the uh, instructional video. I think I've covered most of the main functional parts. If you've got any questions, then obviously we'd be happy to answer those uh, on the day that you collect or in the interim uh, between now and the day of collection. So we look forward to seeing you on the happy day that you collect this fantastic new Auto Trail motorhome.